My name is Michael Klopp, and I'm here from the Southern Vermont Natural History Museum. And we're almost an hour from you guys. If you just go straight west out of Keene, across Route 9, stay right on Route 9, and you come to us. Yep, we're over here at this big scenic overlook. And we have, uh, for the most part, an old school natural history museum. You can see some of the stuff behind me here. Springs, some beavers. The building actually has about 250 different kinds of animals in it. Uh, and almost every one of them is something that you guys can find in New Hampshire. Almost all of them. Actually, there are more animals in this museum you can see in New Hampshire than you can see in Vermont. Because you guys have ocean, right? You have that ocean habitat. We don't have that. So uh, the seabirds and things we have in the exhibit, we wouldn't see here. Um, whereas you guys could go to the beach and see them there. The museum the beach, is... The, they see a lot of stuff. Yeah, so for the most part, it is stuff like that crane back there. It's stuffed animals. Not everybody likes stuffed animals though, right? Some people want to see the real deal. They want to see like a stuffed things. animal giraffe. And what we want to do is get people to go outside and see real live animals in their backyards. But we also can go and see live animals up close or through a screen. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to meet some of those live animals. And should we get started? Yeah. Thumbs up, awesome. Very often, when we look at old stories, stories from people all over the world, you'll see a lot of times the animals or the heroes even are tricksters. You guys know what a trickster is? Somebody who plays pranks, somebody maybe cheats. Sometimes there's someone who's not very nice. But a lot of times with the old stories, we learned a lot from tricksters. Maybe we learned, don't do that. Cause you know, you don't wear a helmet, you're gonna hurt your head. Come on coyote, figure it out. One of the oldest examples of this is an animal. It's lots of stories. And in some parts of the world, the spider was a teacher. In some parts of the world, the teacher was a guardian, or the spider was a guardian to the afterlife. In Africa, the spider was a trickster, and they called him Anansi the spider. And Anansi did all kinds of cool things. And some cultures in Africa said all stories are because of Anansi, that Anansi found all the stories of the world. This is a story about Anansi being a trickster, being kind of a prankster. And I'm trying to set this spider up so you guys can see her while we do this. Maybe I need to back up a little. How's that? Better? I have arachnophobia. I hate spiders. You what? hate spiders? Uh, we'll help you with that after, Anna. All right. But let's do the story first. So Anansi was a lazy spider. Mm. He loved good things, but he didn't like working for them. So very often, Anansi would get himself in trouble, stealing things, trick people into taking things. And one day, when Anansi was wandering through the woods, he found something. He found something amazing that nobody had ever seen. He, he looked at it there in the woods, and he, it was sparkly, and it was colorful, and it seemed hard, but soft. And he, and he said to himself, my. That's a very strange rock. That's a strange moss-covered rock. And as he said those words, Anansi fell to the ground, asleep. Sometime later, Anansi woke up and he looked around. What happened? And he tried to remember, okay, I was walking down the path. I saw that thing and I said, what a strange moss-covered rock. And boom, down Anansi went again. Sometime later, Anansi woke up, and this time he had a big smile on his face. Mm. He understood the magic of the strange moss-covered rock, and he knew how he was going to use it. The next morning, Anansi walked around town, and there, sitting on his porch, was Elephant. Oh, he was tired. He'd had a busy morning, 
he had picked all the ripe melons from his garden, and there was a huge basket of melons sitting on his porch. Anansi loved melons, but do you think he had his own garden? Did he weed and water? No. Nope. But he knew how he was going to get those melons. He walked up to Elephant. He said, hey, Elephant, how you doing? Boy, what a beautiful day. But it's getting kind of hot, don't you think? Wouldn't it be nice to go for a walk in the woods? And Elephant thought about it for a moment. And he said, well, Anansi, how nice of you to invite me to the forest. I would love to go for a walk with you. And so Anansi and Elephant walked out into the cool forest. And Anansi led them down this path and that path till they came to a certain path that Anansi knew well. And he led Elephant down that certain path to that certain spot. And then an elephant saw something amazing. He went, Anansi, what is that thing in the pond? And I said, don't know, elephant. I've never seen anything like it. How would you describe that? An elephant said, well, it, it looks like a strange moss-covered rock to me. And boom, down one elephant. Now, Anna knew it was coming. Sound asleep right there on the path. <gasps> Anansi, as quick as he could, ran back to Elephant's house, grabbed a huge basket of cantaloupes, and brought them home and hid them at his house. Sometime later, Elephant woke up, all alone, very confused, and he went home. The next day, Anansi was out again, and today, oh, today, Zebra had harvested her bananas. Oh, Anansi loved bananas, and he walked up to Zebra's house, and he said, hey, Zebra, how are you doing today? It's going to be a hot one, don't you think? I was just going to go for a walk in the woods. You want to come with me? And Zebra went, oh, why, Anansi, nice of you. I would love to go for a walk in the forest with you. And away they went into the woods, Zebra and Anansi. And Anansi led the way down that certain path to that certain place. And Zebra right away went, oh, look at that strange moss-covered rock. Boom, down went Zebra. And back to her house, quick as he could, ran Anansi. And Anansi grabbed all those ripe bananas. And away he went. How does he carry that if he's just a little spider? Magic. The next day was the same thing, and the day after that, until eventually none of the animals had any of their best delicious fruits and vegetables left. Anansi was very pleased with himself. He'd gotten away with it, almost. Because the whole time, someone had been watching little bush deer who hides in the forest had seen what Anansi was up to and she had a plan of her own. She went deep into the forest and she gathered the ripest, most beautiful mangoes she could find. And she piled them up on her porch in town and she waited. Mangoes and man mangoes. The next morning, here comes Anansi. He saw those bright, delicious mangoes. Have you guys ever had mangoes? I did, but I don't like them. Yes. I like them. They're so sweet. Exactly. Anansi saw those. Oh, little bush deer. How would you like to go for a walk in the woods with me today? It would be wonderful for us to go for a walk, don't you think? And little bush deer said, oh, Anansi, thank you so much. I would love to go for a walk with you. And into the woods they went. Anansi led the way through the forest path to that certain path, right straight to that certain place. And he said, oh, little bush deer, look at that. What in the world do you think that is? And little bush deer went, oh, that is the most beautiful flower I've ever seen. And Anansi went, no, not, not the flower, right there in the middle of the trail, don't you see it? And little bush deer went, oh, oh, Yes, the, the leaves make a very interesting pattern of shadows. Oh, that's so lovely, isn't it? No, said Anansi, right there. Don't you see it? And little Bushy went, I'm, I'm sorry, Anansi. I don't know what you mean. What, what do you want me to say? And Anansi went, right there, the strange moss-covered rock. Mm. And 
down when Anansi, hmm. Quick as she could, little bush deer ran through the forest all the way back to town. She gathered all the animals up and they went to Anansi's house. Sometime later, when he woke up, all of his stolen food was gone. Yeah. And Anansi couldn't play that trick anymore. Is this, is this one of those groups where I'm going to have to tell sad stories? We've got a brutal sad story we could tell you. Maybe, maybe not. Josh was like, yeah, man, make it sad. Okay, cool. Uh, so do you guys have any questions about the spider? Here, actually, let's turn her around so I don't have to keep doing that. I should tell I you, this is a rose hair tarantula. And I saw a couple of you message that you were a little nervous about spiders. And that's something, you know, a lot of people get nervous around about spiders. And this spider is way bigger than any spider we're going to see out in the woods here in the Northeast. This is a spider from South America. She's called a rose hair tarantula. I don't know if you guys can see that kind of purple on her head there. That's what you're supposed to do. You guys see that? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Uh, but I and you guys live in Nancy. the desert and in the forests, kind of dry forests of South America. Uh, they're a really neat spiders. They're one of the most popular pet spiders, and which means there's a lot of unwanted pet spiders that are rosehair tarantulas. And that's what she is. Someone had her as a pet, and then she they decided, you know what? This is a boring thing to have. I, I don't want a big spider. And they gave her to a nature center in northern Vermont, and then they got sick of her, and they sent her down to us. Do you have a question, Joshua? I missed it. I saw the chat, but I didn't read it. No? Okay. Joshua says she doesn't like spiders either. Yeah. Well, luckily for us, now sometimes people, actually, you guys tell me, why, why do we get worried about spiders? What makes them scary? Uh, Anna? Yeah, I don't know. There's like so many legs in the, the eyes. So many legs? You know, and they can be poisonous. Tell me that she's a little creeped out like, because you don't have enough legs. And they can be poisonous. They can, Sometimes yeah. Uh, part of a and I think, do you mean mind. venomous, Joshua? Because that's a different, right? It's all about yeah, who. I, I could eat this spider if different. I wanted to. She's not poisonous. But if she bit me, we may have a little problem because she does have venom. You guys get the difference? It's like a rattles. It's all if you get bit by something and it makes you sick, it was venomous. If you bite it and it makes you sick, it was poisonous. Yeah. Um, luckily, very few spiders have venom that's strong enough to hurt you or me. This tarantula, for example, if she did bite me and she just bumped as much venom as she could, it'd be like a bee sting. Not a big deal. Her big defense is actually kicking the hairs off her back. Yeah, we call that the good old butt hair defense. Yeah. <laughs> because those hairs are like little tiny, almost like porcupine quills. And if they got up in my eyes or my nose, it would make my eyes itch, my nose itch, and they puff right up. In the wild, that's a great defense, right? If a, a bird or a raccoon or somebody came and tried to eat her and she kicked those hairs up in their face, and their eyes got all puffed up, that's pretty dangerous if you're a wild animal. Now, Anwita, did you have something you wanted to say? Um, yeah, um, um, there's a book that my teacher gave me of a Nancy the Spider. Yeah. And she had a Nana. And her yeah, Nana, Nana, and she yeah. really loved beans. And then her Nana, but, but, but the Nana told her to, dig a hole before she make it. If she doesn't, she'll not give it to her. So she said, mm, I, I will dig. And then she dig and then she got the beans. She, and when Nana left on with the bowl of beans, she came and took her hat and then she put a beans in the hat and then she sneakily went away. And then Nana came before she went away. And then what happened when Nana got Nana got mad and then and then she ran away and then she 
it was too sunny and then she she didn't know there's beans in the hat and and auntie accidentally put the hat on her head and then her hair <laughs> melted wow yeah and auntie it's tricky sneaky yeah like you I said a, do you have some anansi books at the library you have some anansi um, yeah library. Oh, nice how about would you guys like to meet another animal we would yeah how about another trickster we got a good trickster what is this thing what? A rabbit. rabbit yeah it's a rabbit rabbits are animals that if we look around the world people all over the world thought rabbits were pretty awesome in europe this thing was the symbol of spring think about that for a minute in the days before grocery stores in the days before takeout pizza in the days before school, even Zoom meetings, back when everything you had, you had to either grow or find yourself. People thought, you know, winter, well, what do you think they thought about winter? Thumbs up or thumbs down? That. And everything's you dead, right? For one, I love winter. You can't love plant winter. a garden. You, you can't find any berries. It's just awful. And they thought the thing that that was best to symbolize the end of death and the return of life, the return of spring, was this guy. Is that neat? The superpowered rabbit. And in cultures all over the world, rabbit turns up as a trickster. Here in North America, there's all kinds of stories of rabbit doing cool tricks and pranks and figuring stuff out. Uh, Africa too, rabbit's a big trickster. Tortoise in the hair for a You guys time. might even know. <clears throat> yeah, let's see. Do you guys know the story about the turtle and the rabbit? Yeah. Yeah, I do. You know the turtle and the rabbit? So you know how the turtle cheats, right? It tricks the trickster. Wait. Wait. I'm getting some funny. Oh, are you guys thinking tortoise and hare? Yeah, like they have it's a, a race. different. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you the rabbit and the turtle story. So this was a story, it starts off like the tortoise and the hare. And with a lot of these stories, you wonder, did they steal this idea from the other people? Hmm. But it starts off kind of the same. You know, the rabbit is hanging out with the turtle down by the pond, because uh, that's where turtles live, right? In the water. And the rabbit's just kind of not being very nice. He's picking on the turtle. He's saying stuff like, turtle, you are so slow. By the time you get to school, a late bus is taking kids home. <laughs> Rabbit, turtle, turtle, you are so slow. By the time you're done with breakfast, it's dinner time. <laughs> turtle didn't like this very much. And after a while, turtle was kind of sick of it. And turtle was like, you know, Rabbit, I'm not super fast. It's true. You are a fast runner. No doubt, you can run way faster than I can. But Rabbit, I am an awesome swimmer. And I can swim faster than you do. As a matter of fact, I can swim around this lake faster than you can run around it. Rabbit was like, what? Impossible. I am the fastest thing there is. I'm faster than stars fall. I'm faster than the wind blows. I am the fastest thing. I will race you right now, turtle. And Turtle was like, you're on, buddy. Let's go. I'll dive in and swim. You run around the edge. And Rabbit was like, wait a minute. Because Rabbit was pretty smart. And Rabbit knew Turtle was tricky. And he knew Turtle could hold his breath for a long time. And he said, Turtle, while you're swimming, you got to poke your head up. Because you'll just hold your breath and sink to the bottom and pretend you swam around. Mm-hmm. So Turtle thought about this. Now, hmm, that's, that's pretty smart, Rabbit. Yeah. Uh, tell you what, no problem. I'll pop my head up while I swim around, but it's getting late. Let's come back in the morning and race. And Rabbit was like, oh, yeah, you bet. No problem. Rabbit was excited because he wanted a crowd. And he ran all around the forest and all around the fields and get all the animals together. He said, hey, guys, tomorrow morning, come to the pond. I'm going to race Turtle. I'm going to win because I'm an awesome rabbit. <laughs> turtle and guys pay close attention to this part okay this is important the important part turtle only told his closest friends and relatives did you guys get that yeah okay good back to the story yeah. the next morning 
morning time, sun comes up, the animals are all gathering, rabbit's doing his stretches, getting ready to go. Turtle's just sitting on a rock, soaking up sunshine. And then, uh, I don't know, an owl or somebody came down and they're like, all right, turtle, you got to poke your head up while you swim around the edge. Rabbit, you got to stay on the trail. We'll meet you guys back here at this rock. First animal wins. On your mark, get set, go. Rabbit took off down the trail. <laughs> turtle jumped in the water. <laughs> rabbit was fast. And he went trucking down that trail. He's like, all right, where's Rabbit? Where's Turtle? Where's Turtle? And he looks out at the water. Hmm. And just ahead of it, what does he see come up out of the water but a turtle head? Turtle's head! <laughs> How did he get ahead of me? Rabbit couldn't believe it. The turtle was ahead of him. So he starts running even faster. <laughs> But every time he looks out at the water, just ahead of him, another turtle poking his head up again. And faster and faster, Rabbit ran. The leaves were blowing off the trees, a huge cloud of dust kicking up behind him. But every time he looks out of the water, just ahead, there's Turtle. <laughs> ah! Finally, Rabbit came around the last turn, maybe running faster than it happened. he's ever run before. He's running so fast, the birds in the sky are like, dude, you're going to slow down. He knew, I'm going to win, I'm going to win. And then out of the water comes Turtle. Boop. Climbs upon the rock. I win. Good effort, Bunny Rabbit. I'm the best. You lost. <laughs> Rabbit was so embarrassed. No. He didn't stay to congratulate Turtle, nothing. He just ran right off into the woods, totally ashamed. Turtle was like, woo. I won. Everybody's high-fiving him. And then the crowd kind of cleared out. Hmm. And from around the edge of the pond, something happened. Now, I saw Joshua said he's heard it. Joshua, what happened? Um, actually, I did this in Looney Tunes once. He caught, um, he basically tricked Bugs Bunny in that he tricked him to what did he do he the relatives um were decoys and he was at the end when um others were along the trail ahead of him um to confuse him you got it yeah from all around the pond all of the turtles friends and relatives poked their heads up i realized that too and cheered. They had tricked that old rabbit. A lot of Bugs Bunny cartoons. And usually kids, kids have no idea what Bugs Bunny cartoons are. So good for you looking at the old school cartoons. But a lot of Bugs Bunny cartoons actually steal straight out of Native American stories. And Bugs Bunny is a trickster too, isn't he? Just like the Native American rabbit was, or the African rabbit, or the Australian rabbit even. Well, no, actually, Australian rabbit's a totally different story. Come on, back up there. So, do you guys have rabbit questions? And then maybe we'll meet somebody else. What do you think? Does he have a name? Does he have a name? Yeah, this is Elmer. <laughs> yeah, Elmer the rabbit. He doesn't know it, though. You can call him something else if you want. <laughs> the uh, spider, by the way, and let's see. Okay, we, we're doing a library program. We're going to test your book knowledge. And it looks like, no, not a test. Actually, no, you're like, no, it's, it's like, yeah, let's so the go. The spider is named Lavender Brown. Hmm. It's Harry a tough Potter. One. Who said that? Harry Potter. Me. Yeah. I'm, I'm a huge Potter head. Harry Potter. I love, her. I love Harry Potter, but I don't look at the credits. No, it's a, a secondary character, right? Harry Potter. Very nice. For you guys, one or two more? Yep. Yeah, all right. So, this bird is a red-tailed hawk. So uh, I that nice red tail. My friend Diane Faye loves red-tailed hawks. Yeah, cool. Yeah, red-tailed hawks are an awesome hawk. And this is a bird that you guys, if you have never seen a red-tailed hawk, I know something about your car. I know you have screens in your car. Because when you drive down the road, there are red-tailed hawks everywhere. Everywhere. You look out your window, you will see these guys. Any place there's open space, you might see a red-tailed hawk. Yes. The way to spot them is that 
bright chest and the dark spots on their belly. That's really the better way to recognize them because you don't get to see that red tail all that much. Right. Now, some of you might have noticed something weird about this one. Can you guys hear that? It's a bell, so if he flies away, you know it's him. How do you know that, Anna? It's just a guess. I've been to I've been to Vins, um, yeah. in third grade, and they all had little like noisemakers around their ankles. Yeah, perfect. Good, good. Yeah, and that's actually true. This bird, um, even though you know, just like Vins, our live birds of prey are well. Most of the Vins birds are handicapped, like our birds. So Bill here was hit by a truck car and it broke his wrist. So he has a hard time flying up. You know what he does really good? Flies down, flies straight pretty good. So he wouldn't be able to survive out in the wild, but he can fly across the soccer field or around an auditorium or follow us down the trail out here outside the museum. So that bell is there, so if he flies off into the bushes when we're doing that, we don't freak out, right? We're like, oh, we lost the hawk. But we hear that bell, we know he's right over there in the bushes. Um, so I thought, because we had that bell, and I don't want to go too crazy with the Native American stories. We want to spread it out a little bit. Uh, there's a story about a falconry bird that falconry is using a bird prey to hunt, and those birds would have bells just like he does um, or would have bells but there's two different versions and I want you guys to pick the version for me okay there's one version that's about Genghis Khan Genghis Khan we'll get to who Genghis Khan is if you choose that one it's a little longer it's a little better and it's a lot sadder then there's pretty much the exact same story but instead of Genghis Khan, it's King George before he was St. George, pre-dragon fighting days. That one's shorter. It's not as sad. It's probably not as good. What do you guys think? The uh, Genghis dude. Genghis Khan, you want to be sad? Okay. Joshua, what do you think? Thumbs up for Genghis Khan? Thumbs, thumbs, up, thumbs down for Genghis Khan or thumbs up, Josh? Maybe he didn't care. I'm going to call it a thumbs up. Okay. So we'll do the Genghis Let's Khan. Try Genghis Khan. Great. Temporary. All right. Awesome. So, in case you guys don't know, Genghis Khan, about, and Anuita, we, we can't see or hear you. I don't know if you know that. Um, I might do, uh, but I don't know how to on it. Okay. No, okay. We can hear you. Yeah, we don't need to see you. It's okay. It's up to you. Um, so long ago, about, well, let's see, let me do the math. Well, about over 800 years ago, there was this guy, Genghis Khan, and he's best known for being a warlord of gathering huge armies together that rampaged over most of Asia, even into Europe. This guy, everybody was afraid of Genghis Khan. He did some things that are pretty bad, but he also invented the International Postal Service. Complicated guy. One thing, though, about Genghis Khan, which was true of most of the rulers of the time, really, was he loved flying hawks. And he had hundreds of them. He had hawks and falcons and eagles. Genghis Khan even flew owls, which was strange. And this is a time... It is a hawk owl. This story, right, like a hawk out. This story is from a time when there wasn't a war going on. He wasn't fighting anybody. He was just kind of hanging out at home. And some people think that's because it was so hot. Is he nice? No. Oh, the hawk or Genghis Khan? Yeah. Is he nice? The hawk's not bad. Yeah. So they think the reason Genghis Khan wasn't fighting was because of the heat. It was incredibly hot. It hadn't rained. The fields were turning to dust. It was too hot to put on armor and go fight. It was too hot to make your horses run around. Everybody was just sitting in the shade, sipping cool drinks. This made Genghis Khan nuts. He hated just sitting around. He just hated doing nothing all day. And finally, he got up one afternoon. He went, hey, you, 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 and you. Tomorrow, we're going hunting. 
And he gathered up all of his trusted advisors, all of his closest friends. And tomorrow morning, first light, we're going to go out and go hunting. We're going to do something. And he did. He gathered them all up. And they didn't want to do it. No. They were like, oh, it's going to be hot. There's, there's no animals out there. And he's like, uh-uh, we're going. And if Genghis Khan said, uh-uh, you're going, you went. So first light. There they were, gathering up their horses and their bows and their spears and, of course, their hawks and their falcons. Now, we're going to let this bird be a falcon, okay? He's not really. He's a red tail hawk. But in the story, well, let's make it a hawk in the story. Is that okay, guys? Can we switch it to a hawk in the story? All right. Well, yeah, I mean, we've got a hawk out there. so my Even life. though Genghis Khan had hundreds of birds, this day he brought only one. He brought his favorite hawk. She was the best hawk he had ever had. She was an incredible hawk. She was the best hunter. She knew what he was thinking before he thought it. She was just an amazing bird, and he loved her very much. And away they all went, riding their horses, the dogs running around, and off they went into the day. And sure enough, the great king's friends were right. There were no animals to hunt, and the day got hotter and hotter and hotter. And everybody started to whine. They started to complain. Can we go back now? It's too hot. I want to go back in the shade. I, I've got a cool drink I want to drink. And, and finally, Genghis Khan was just, you know what? Fine, fine. There's a crossroad up ahead. You guys go take the shortcut home. I'm going to take the long way and let my hawk fly. So all the king's friends and advisors took a hard left and beeline right straight back for home. Shortcut. Let's get out of here. The great king took the hood off his hawk, let her go, and she flew up in the sky, circling up higher and higher and higher until she looked as small as a little bird, and then higher and higher and higher until he couldn't even see her anymore, a speck disappearing into the sky. But he wasn't worried. You're not doing the part here, bird. He wasn't worried. She was the best hawk he'd ever had. He knew she would wait up there high in the sky. And if he could get some pheasant or some rabbit to run out into the open, she'd fold her wings and drop through the sky and catch that animal. She was the best hawk he'd ever had. And off he went down the road. And it was pretty hot. He had to admit it was very hot. He, he went to get a drink. His men had taken all the water. He didn't have any water. But this was his land. He knew where the water was. He knew down over the bank, up ahead, there was a little stream. So he rode his horse down through the bushes, down to the stream, but the stream was dry. Uh-oh. Well, that's okay. Because the stream was filled by a spring that never went dry. No problem. If he just followed the stream, he'd find water eventually. Oh, it was hot. It was so hot. He could, he could feel like sand in his mouth. It was so hot. And he followed that path and no water. Did I mention it was hot? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. It was really, really he hot. Times. And finally, he looks finally, cute. he could hear up ahead of him a little, a little drip of water. Oh, finally, water. And he hurried up along the stream bed and he came to a place just below the spring where water was trickling through the rocks. He took a, a little cup out of his saddlebags and he held it under that drip, 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 oh, drip, drip. Oh, oh I, it was hot. Drip. And, and the water was like a quarter full, half full. Oh, he couldn't wait anymore. He's going to take a drink. And he lifted the cup to his lips. Mm -hmm. A rush of wind and wings and the cup was knocked out of his hand. What? Who would dare? Strike a cup from the hand of Genghis Khan. He was so angry, he looked around. It was his hawk. She'd swooped down and knocked the cup out of his hand. She was perched on a tree branch. What are you doing? He was so angry, he picked his cup back up again. Drip, drip. Oh, he was so thirsty. Drip, drip. Not even, not even a quarter full yet. I'm just going to drink. And again, whoosh. The hawk rocketed through the air and knocked the cup out of his hand. The king this time was so mad, so angry. Why you are you a hawk? Ah. 
He picked his cup up again. Drip, drip, drip. Oh, so thirsty. Drip, drip. Uh, gonna, gonna take a sip. Time. The hawk shot through the air, knocked the cup from his hand. And this time, Genghis Khan, in a rage, went to his saddlebags. He got a bow. He took knocked an arrow. And he killed the hawk. Killed the hawk? A hawk? Genghis Khan. Why didn't he just is give cute. it some Looked water? At the, it, Looked at the bird. And the hawk is so very cute. Picked up the cup. Drip. Drip. The hawk is very cute. Quarter full, half full, three quarters full. The great Khan went to drink, but he was stopped again. But this time it was his men. They were up on top of the hill. They'd come back looking for him and they were shouting, more, don't drink, don't drink, sir. Genghis Khan's enemies had poisoned the spring. Dead animals lie all around it. Genghis Khan couldn't see it, but his hawk could. He realized she had saved his life three times. And he repaid her by killing he her. He buried that hawk with all the ceremony and splendor of a queen. And never again did he see a hawk that was her equal. Very good. Very sad. That story? I love that story. Sad. It's kind of a sad story, isn't it? But it's a great example, I think, of a story that teaches a lesson, right? A lot of times we hear the moral of the story, right? Have you guys heard the moral of the story, right? People talk about that all the time. Um, and I think that there's a great lesson there to not like have some self-control, right? To not lose your temper. Maybe it's to find out all the facts before you react. I, I don't really know what the moral is, but it feels like there's a good moral there. What do you guys think? Maybe? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. I thought it was because he needed to have more patience and wait until it was full so he didn't have to keep going back. <laughs> well, he's lucky, really. He's lucky he never got to fill it, huh? Yeah. I should show you guys just, I mean, we'll do a little sciencey stuff here. That red-tailed hawk, you guys notice his feet? Hmm. Big old toenails, those are his talons. And that's what he uses to catch his food. That's really why we would call this bird or an owl or an eagle or a raptor. It actually means to grab or to seize. And that beak, silverware, good for cutting up your food. Yeah. Do you guys have questions? I feel like I blasted right through the questions on the rabbit. Why not? Uh, no. This, does he have a name? Yeah, this is Bill. <laughs> it's a silly name, I know. But he doesn't know what it is, so you can call him something else if you want. Right. Hi, Jeffrey. I think Bill's ready to go back. Do you guys, we have time for one more animal. We'll do a short, short story with one more animal. Does that sound good? Right. Okay. Uh, he's right there. He's been here the whole time, and you guys haven't noticed. <laughs> Try a little. You guys know what this is? Uh, a turtle. A, good head. a turtle. Yeah, did anyone know what yeah, kind of turtle. turtle he is? No. Big one? A big one, right? This is yeah, a yeah. snapping turtle. Oh. It's hard to recognize them with their mouths closed. Usually when we see these guys, if they're out of the water, they're trying to bite you. Um, but the reason for that is this belly. You guys see that big soft belly of his? Yes. A snapping turtle oh. can't in its shell like other turtles do. Now, normally that's not a big deal. He has these great big webbed feet, super swimmer. He can just, he can hold his breath for like an hour, even in the middle of the summer. Uh, no problem for him in the water. He feels totally safe there. But he's out of the water. Things get scary. And the way they protect themselves is with that big mouth. 
and those that strong jaw. A snapping turtle this size can bite about as hard as I can if I really bit as hard as I could. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever bit a pencil. Hey. Have you? I'm not going to say try it, but try it. <laughs> snapping turtle can do that no problem. Uh, strong, strong jaws, but it's not really to attack. You know, he's not going to chase you across the yard or anything. It's just to try to protect themselves. And snapping turtles are animals that have been on the world here in North America for 90 million years. It not only looks like a dinosaur, it used to live side by side with dinosaurs. Snapping turtles just like this one were in the world before, before the T-Rex was in the world. Isn't that nuts? And where are those T-Rexes now? And here's our snapping turtle. This guy's pretty neat. He's from Bennington, Vermont. Some kids found him when he was a little baby and they kept him as a pet, which is against the law here. Uh, they didn't know it. And after a few years, they got sick of him and he ended up with us. This guy now weighs almost 20 pounds. So he's about half grown. Yeah, he can grow to be about twice as big as he is now. Um, and living in captivity with us, he's gonna eat a lot more than he would in the wild. So he might even get bigger than that. Wild snapping turtles would get twice his size. Now, right now, if you went out to the pond, it would be hard to find a snapping turtle. Well, maybe not today, but when the weather gets cold, these guys are cold blooded. So that means they can't make their own body heat. For them, when the temperatures get to freezing, you know what happens to a cold blooded animal? They freeze. And freezing is super bad for you. Don't do it. What a snapping turtle will do to keep from freezing solid is they'll go down to the bottom of the pond because the water there won't freeze. It'll stay about 35 degrees. And he can sit in the bottom of that pond at about 35 degrees all winter long. There's a lot that goes into that. We're going to hold off on it. Maybe we'll come back to the end. This story is actually a Native American story from this part of the country uh, that is about a snapping turtle. And that snapping turtle was the king of his pond. He was the master of his pond. Everybody knew snapping turtle was the boss. And one winter, he went to sleep with that happy thought in his mind, I am the boss of my pond. And he stayed there. And for months and months, he slept and dreamed of how great it was to be the king. And then spring came and the water started to warm up and snapping turtle woke up and he thought, well, I guess it's time to go survey my domain. And he started to swim up. Hmm. And he started to swim up. Hmm. And he kept swimming up. And he kept swimming up. He's like, man, I don't remember being this far, huh? And he swam up and he swam up and he swam up. He's like, what is going on? My pond wasn't this deep when I fell asleep. And up and finally, he stuck his head above the surface and he looked around. His pond had become a lake. Ha ha, he thought, I am the king of a lake. Way cooler than king of a pond. He was pretty pleased. His pond had become gigantic and he swam around the edge of it, just kind of checking out. Oh, nice. I like to be able to swim over there. Oh, it looks like some good uh, worms probably over there. This is great. Oh, it's wonderful. And then he came to something that was a little scary. He came to a big pile of sticks and mud. Mm. And that pile of sticks and mud went all along the shore and snapping turtle recognized it right away. It was a beaver dam. That beaver dam hadn't been there before. Snapping turtle climbed up onto the mud and kind of checked it out. He's like, uh-oh, beaver's here. Everybody was afraid of beaver. Beaver was grouchy, beaver was grumpy, and beaver had huge, sharp, yellow teeth that he could bite with, just like Anna. No sooner had Snapping Turtle realized, uh-oh, Beaver's here, then who should come out of the water? Beaver. And Beaver took one look at Snapping Turtle and said, hey, what are you doing in my pond? Get out of here. 
The snapping turtle went, uh, it's my pond, Beaver. And Beaver, no, 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 no. This is my pond. I built the dam. I built the lodge. You got to get out of here, turtle. There's no room for you in my pond. Now, snapping turtle was tough, but he was afraid of Beaver's big orange teeth. He was afraid if they got in a fight, they'd lose. So as Beaver got all up in his face, snapping turtle smiled and went, look, Beaver, I could fight you for it. I could beat you up easy, but that wouldn't seem fair. You've done a lot of work here. I want to give you a chance. I'm going to race you across the pond. Snapping Turtle knew he could zip across his pond like nobody's business. He was a super fast swimmer. You guys remember that from the other story? Yes. Beaver just laughed. He knew Snapping Turtle was scared, but he said, sure, I'm a great swimmer. I'll outswim you no problem. Ready, set, go. And they dove in the water. Now Snapping Turtle took off. He was way ahead of Beaver. He was feeling great. But remember, he'd been sleeping for months. And his pond, he used to be able to zip across no problem, was like three times bigger now. So pretty quickly, he noticed Beaver catching up. Uh-oh. And Beaver passed him. Uh-oh. And Beaver was up ahead of him. Oh, no. Snap and Turtle swam as fast as he could, but Beaver still kept pulling away. Beaver was laughing. <laughs> See you, Turtle. Then Snapping Turtle knew what he had to do. He reached out his neck as far as he could and he <laughs> under the end of Beaver's tail. Ow. Beaver noticed a little drag, but he kept swimming anyway. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna win, I'm gonna win. Whew, this is harder than I thought. Oh, I feel like I'm putting on a couple extra pounds or something. Whew. He kept swimming, he was almost to the end and he looked back over his shoulder. Where's that turtle? And he saw where Snapping Turtle was. Pulled him right on the end of his tail. Arr. Beaver went, hey, get off of me. Get off of me. And he swung his tail side to side. Snapping Turtle held on. Beaver said, get off of me. And he swung his tail up and down. Snapping Turtle held on. Beaver flipped as hard as he could to the right, as hard as he could to the left, as hard as he could down, as hard as he could up. And just as Snapping Turtle was lifted out of the water, he let go and flew through the air. Right at the finish line. And landed on the shore. Beaver went, Hey, you cheated! Snapping Turtle went, I won. Luckily for Snapping Turtle, Beaver realized, yes, he had won. But Snapping Turtle, not wanting to cause trouble, told Beaver he could stay in his pond. And even today, if you guys find a big beaver pond, you'll probably find Snapping Turtles there. They still live together now. So that's the end of that. Do you have a question, Anna? What were you just doing? Oh. Yeah. I was just clapping. Oh, nice. Thank you. You guys like the stories? Very good. Yes. Uh, thank I you. Do you have any questions or anything? Now I'm going to put him back. He's getting heavy. Yeah, he probably would. I love the turtle, the bunny one. Is the bunny. I also like the bird. That's great. Well, thank you very much. And I don't know if you guys have ever been to the museum or not, but Anna, we're really that far away from you. And we're open six days a week now. So we're open every day except wow. Tuesday. Uh, if you want to come check it out, we've got some bald eagles and a cool raven. Oh, well, I had bald eagles. Yeah. And we have a new animal coming to live with us. We're gonna announce it on December 1st. It's gonna be a big deal. We'll be the first uh, people yeah. in Vermont to have one of these things. Oh, that's yeah. December 1st, huh? Well, That's when we're announcing it, yeah. Great. Right. It's from Vermont, it's a Vermont animal? Oh yeah, absolutely. Great. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Drew. It's great. I think everybody had a great time. And I bet you, if you wanted to read those stories, we have a really good folk tale section. So mm -hmm. I find you all those stories if you wanted to read them or more like them. And there are incredible stories from all over the world, guys. That it just there. And the best part is people are making stories right now. You guys are making stories. Everything that happens to you could be a story, right? And Anna and Wyatt, one of you raised your hand. 
Look at that Zoom meeting protocol. Yes, Anna? Uh, that was me. Um, what is the museum called? Oh, we're the Southern Vermont Natural History Museum. I think it was on the event, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah and it's on the way, it's in Marlborough. It's on the way, like if you were gonna drive from Keene to Bennington, Vermont, you would probably go through it. You'd go right by us, yep. Um, the website's vermontmuseum.org. If you were looking, it looks like you're looking for it, Anna. Uh, okay, thank all you. Right, guys. Well, thank you all very much. Have a great night. And boy, get outside while it's still warm and have, have a good time out there.